Today, we are going to uh, be talking about back pain, which affects quite a few people. And you're going to be helping us to learn what we can do to help alleviate back pain. Now, you look like a, a fit young man. So how did you wind up helping others to deal with back pain? Actually, give me just I just want to make sure that nothing is getting frozen. Just one more. Okay, so that's what uh, Leon's going to be working on something there. And while he's doing that, we are going to talk about how you're going to be asking us questions, you in the audience, you green warriors. And I'm sure that you have come up with some questions, maybe came here to find out some information. So if you have a question that you want to ask Leon, it would be a good time. You could tell us right now in the comments what your question is, and then we will save that for later and ask him the question. So just go ahead and type that in the comments if you have a question. And even if you just want to say hi, if you're new here or if you're a returning Green Warrior, please go ahead and do that as well because we would love to hear from you. You can uh, just say hi and tell us where you're from if you like. And we're going to have uh, Leon get set up because he wants to make sure that his connection is good for everybody. Oh, we have a Whole Food Plant Based Life Hi from Alaska. Hello. And oh, Jennifer from Oregon. Very nice. And Sheila from the UK. Hi, Sheila. Okay, let's see if Leon is, is back. Are you there? You good now? Yes. Yes. Okay, Sorry about excellent. that. I yeah. No worries. That's the fun thing about so, live. <laughs> sometimes, you're, sometimes you're, yeah, sometimes it's cutting off for some reason. I just hardwired in. I don't know if that will help or not. Yeah, but. that's that can be very helpful. And what I was telling everybody is that you're going to help us learn about what we can do to help alleviate, alleviate back pain. And I was remarking that, you know, you, you look like a fit young man. So how did you wind up helping others to, with, to deal with back pain? How did that happen? Yeah, actually, so I was always having a lot of uh, back pain and, and muscle tightness myself. Um, I'm a professional ballroom dancer also, so I kind of grew up uh, competing and training a lot in dancing. And, you know, so my body would take a, a hit. And so I would kind of always experiment with different stretching modalities, exercises, uh, and self-massage stuff. And, uh, and that's kind of how I uh, started to alleviate my own back pain and, and, and really focused on my posture uh, as well. And, and that's when I realized that there's a lot of things that um, you can do on your own from home uh, to alleviate your own back pain as well as correct your, your own posture. And, uh, and that's why later on I started uh, the company Back Intelligence, uh, where we now help people correct their postures and, and alleviate back pain on their own, like things that they can do naturally on their own. Yeah, and that is something that's interesting because oftentimes when people are faced with back pain, which is a, a lot of people are experiencing that, and sometimes it may just be a, a short period of time or it could be chronic, and they often are just going to search on the internet and with doctors and all kinds of people for a procedure or some kind of pill or some kind of device they see on late night TV to purchase that they can just relieve their back pain. And they want, of course, we all want everything to be done instantly. And we have to be really careful about that. No. Uh, yes, you were cutting off a few times for me, but I think I got the gist of it. Yeah. Um, that uh, basically uh, people are um, people are, are trying to to get the a quick fix or something like that, but that's not going to be a long term solution. So the long term solution is um, is definitely uh, exercising uh, correctly, working on specific muscle imbalances, correcting uh, your posture, uh, correcting your ergonomics, how you're sitting how you're standing, how you're walking. Um, and of course, there, and there's also the psychological component that is also important uh, to tie it all in. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like you have a lot of information for us to share with us. And I'm really excited about that. And, and you talked about posture. I mean, that's a big deal. 
you know, as I, as I am aging and I see people around me who are aging, I'm seeing that that hunched over look. And I, even now I see very young people holding their mobile devices and just standing around and, and they're hunched over. And, you know, you talk about posture. I guess that's really important. You want to talk about that? Yeah. So, yeah, one of the biggest uh, postural dysfunctions is like the forward head posture and rounded shoulders. So, you know, kind of like this, if I show it here, the head comes forward, the shoulders round. And, and yeah, I mean, a lot of the, a lot of our, the things that we interact with are in front of us. So naturally that happens just because we're interacting with something in front of us, and especially, you know, the devices like the phone is one of them. If your computer is low, you tend to look at it like that for eight hours a day. Um, and so, and yeah, obviously all the kids are on their phones these days. So that's why, yeah, the younger generation is also having a really bad posture. Um, yeah, so it's a huge problem right now. And of course, it can, it, it can make uh, the, your appearance look worse, you know, from a conscious position, you know, it's maybe it's not as attractive, um, but also it, it can contribute to tightness in the upper back, neck area, as well as your upper posture affects your low back as well. So, so if you're like this full, so, so many problems with the, yeah, with the, with the poor posture. Yeah. Yeah, and I guess you're very familiar with good posture because I have had the pleasure of watching ballroom dancers and they just are, they remind me of, of ballet dancers. They're just always just look like there's a string pulling up on the top of their head and they just always have wonderful posture. But it could be tricky to, to continue having that kind of posture. I know for me, if I'm working at a computer, sometimes I'm... I'm <laughs> I, I catch myself hunched over and all of a sudden my neck is hurting and I'm saying, gee, I'm just not, must not be sitting correctly. And you have to really catch yourself. That's a, that's a habit that's uh, hard to break. Yeah, it definitely is, takes, um, it definitely, you know, years and years of doing the same thing creates a habit and it's kind of like your nervous system already has been trained to sit in a certain way or to hunch down in a certain way. And then uh, that's why getting out of a poor posture, it's, it basically requires you to retrain your nervous system uh, to get back to neutral alignment. And uh, it takes constant reminding throughout the day for yourself to get into a good posture, even if you're doing all the good exercise. Yeah, and especially if you're involved in looking at looking down at your phone or looking, like you said, at the computer, and then if you have an injury or if you have some kind of a, you know, a, a chronic problem, then then there's a lot of things that you have to be be worried about. And but you're saying that there are things that we can do at home that that can help us. Of course, now we're not giving out medical advice, right? So we have to be careful about that, but, but there are, and you would definitely recommend that somebody be seen by a physician or somebody if, if they're having a, a real acute problem. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Mm -hmm. there, there are a lot of things that we do. I mean, I was talking about the, the mobile devices. I was talking about uh, sitting at the screen, but even I think about maybe driving or, you know, doing things where you're pivoting a lot, you know, where maybe like you're, well, for me, I load and unload the dishwasher all day long, it feels like. <laughs> so what, what are things that we should be thinking about when we're doing those things? Yeah. So yeah, like, like you said, this is not medical advice, but these are some tips and tricks that we can talk about that uh, can make a huge difference over time. So one, one of the biggest things that easiest things that anyone can do is just raise their laptop so that the top uh, third of your screen is at your eye level. Okay. So that's so, and you can just take some books. Uh, there's also laptop stands. I, I have a combination of books and a laptop stand right now. And um, so, so that we, so when you're working on your computer for eight hours a day, you're not doing this. It's just the screen is higher, so you're, you're forced to look up. Um, 
obviously you don't want to be like this either. It's just to yeah. be right. To figure out the height that's right for you. Um, so that's like the easiest thing you can do right away. Uh, the other thing is that's a, an ergonomics thing. Um, you can also get a lumbar cushion support. So just get a one of those cushions or even a rolled up towel or shirt and place it behind um, your, your uh, low back area so that your spine stays neutral. Uh, that can also help, um, again, if you're sitting a lot. Uh, another thing is just get a sit-stand desk and alternate between standing and sitting so you're not I mean, sitting is is one of the worst things you can do for your joints. Uh, so, so we recommend taking every 30 minutes, taking breaks and moving around, doing some stretching. But even just getting up and just walking around is good enough just to get your body moving. Just avoid sitting for more than 30 minutes at a time. Um, the other thing that we teach a lot is a chin tuck exercise. We're going to show it here. You can do it at at your desk, you can do it while you're driving as well. Uh, it's just, you're just going to, so your head's, let's say forward, you're going to tuck it back, okay? That's all it is, so. So basically you can put two fingers if you want on the chin and then tuck it in. You should feel packing in the front of the neck here. So as you're doing it, you're basically training to bring your head back. Um, and uh, the idea is you want to feel packing, like you're, like you're trying to create a double chin almost uh, when you do it properly. And you can do it all day at your desk and you know, you're know you waiting for the light to change while you're in the car. You can knock out a few chin tucks as well. Yeah. Well, that's, that's great. I mean, that's something that we all can do. <laughs> I'm sure there's a lot of excuses for for not doing other things but that's definitely something you, you could even do it at work even when you're talking to somebody you know that that's yeah. a really that's a really great thing well um we have a game that we like to play which is called true or false and we're going to start that now it's time for true or false on be green with amy live answer true or false to amy's questions in the comments below and amy will ask our guest for the expert answer Okay, so we, we kind of talked about this a little bit and we're gonna have everybody type in their answer and then we're gonna ask you to chime in on that. So true or false, when compared to other activities like lying or standing, the compression on the spine from sitting is greater and increases even more when sitting in a hunched forward position. We kind of talked about that. So everybody go ahead and type in your answer and what do you wanna say about that, Leon? So you want me to give you the answer? Yeah, yeah go ahead. Because they're uh, just going to... I mean, it's true. Nobody's yeah, getting I mean, a grade. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, I mean, it definitely is true. Uh, your spine does get compressed. The discs get compressed. The more you sit, your tissues get compressed. There's less blood flow. Um, yeah, and that's why you get all that tightness and, and achiness when you're sitting for too long. So yeah, definitely when you're in hunch position, yeah, it all exacerbates the pressure on the vertebrae even more for sure, yeah. Okay, and you have so much information on your website. We're gonna to talk to everybody about that later because you give out a lot of free information, which is so helpful to people. Okay, so we have another one, which is true or false, when working at a computer with a mouse. It's important to not reach forward too much as this can activate the upper trapezius muscle causing painful trigger points around the shoulder. What do you say, Leon? True. <laughs> I mean, th these are easy. Uh <laughs> well, they're easy for you because you've, you have a lot of uh, experience with all this, but these are things that a lot of people are, are not thinking about. And for me, I know that I try not to have my, my mouse hand too close to me because then my wrist bothers me. So I try to mm. put more of my, my forearm on my desktop when I'm using a mouse so that I don't put too much pressure on the wrist. But I have to be careful, as, as what this is saying, that you don't want to go too forward either. So that's... Right, yeah. I mean, when you go forward sometimes too much, and like this, this is the upper trapezius muscle. It can get... Um, to activate it it's also if, if if your if your shoulder comes up while you're working and that's going to activate all of this 
shoulders and upper trapezius muscles. So yeah. Yeah. You want to be okay. careful. Yeah, we, we say to keep the your arm at a 90 degree angle roughly is probably the best. Yeah, not overreaching. Yeah. Yeah, and these are just things that we're doing all day, you know, either at work or if we're not working, we're on the computer a lot. So yeah. that's that's a great thing. Okay, so here we have another one. True false. Sleeping on your stomach can negatively affect the natural curvature in your spine. Hmm, I know that must be a lot of people that like to sleep on their bellies, so you wouldn't think about that. What do you say, Leon? Uh, true, but uh, I wouldn't say it's it's not so much even about the natural. I mean, yeah, natural curvature, but it, it's just yeah, it puts you in a weird position. Like uh, it especially puts your neck in a really weird position, uh, and and your spine as well. But yeah, that's that's not the best uh, position to sleep. We recommend sleeping on the back or the side. Those are the two best sleeping positions for you and for your spine and for your hips. Yeah, so if somebody was had back pain and they were a, a belly sleeper, that would be something that they would have to try to figure out, navigate how to maybe change that, and that might help them. Yeah, I would definitely. That's the first start okay. with, guys. <laughs> on your stomach. Um, yeah. Okay. And then... Um, Oh, here's another one that we had. Uh, true or false, walking can be a great inexpensive alternative to physical exercise when addressing low back pain. Yeah, true. Yeah. Yeah, they, I, I know. Yeah. Some, go ahead. I, I know some people that are, are having problems with low back pain, and sometimes it seems like you would want to rest if you had low back pain and that maybe – walking would be something that would maybe make it worse so what what do you what do you say about that so it depends i mean if you're you might need um you might need to rest but you don't want to rest too much i mean we always say you need some movement as long as you're able to walk um i mean what you don't want to do is you don't want to walk or exercise with pain because then you're teaching your brain uh you're not desensitizing your brain to the pain so you may need to rest maybe a you know a day or a couple of days if you have to but if you can move around pain relatively pain free then yes you should go for a walk uh, even if it's a slow walk um it's better than nothing and uh, walking is a great exercise because it does it does uh work all the muscles as well. So your core and your glutes can be working, especially if you brace your core, you contract your stomach muscles as you walk. And then your glutes are should be firing properly. So, um, and your glutes and your core is what stabilize your spine. So that's what you, you wanna do. Um, yeah, it, it is shown very well, but the key is you don't wanna feel pain. So if you're walking, Let's say you know that after five or 10 minutes, you get in pain, then just do five, 10 minutes and then increase it as you go. Uh, but don't go, don't go into pain. That's the key. Okay. So you were talking about what to do to, uh, with your stomach muscles. Do you want to kind of explain that a little bit for people that aren't sure of what you mean when you're walking that you wanted to do something with your stomach muscles? Yeah, so uh, so when you're walking, one of the best things you can do is uh, tighten up your abs. So um, I can show it here. So so it's like feel like somebody's punching you in the stomach. So you, that's what we call bracing. So it's like you brace, you contract this, and then with that you walk around. Um, you can take a walk with that, and that's what's what what you're doing there is you're activating your stomach your abdominal wall, and that takes pressure from your low back muscles. So that means your low back, low mus low back muscles won't be firing as much. So that way, and you're, so you're getting good exercise on your abs as well as you're not activating the back. And this is what you should also be doing when you're doing planks or any other core exercising. You should be contracting your muscles and then going to the plank 
There's a lot of people do all those exercises kind of wrong. They activate the low back instead of the front of the yeah. muscles, which is what you want to do. Yeah, or, or when they do in sit-ups, they kind of put pressure on their necks in, instead, so. Yeah, and we don't recommend sit-ups, uh, no sit-ups and no crunch. Uh, those exercises, we can talk about it later or we can talk about it now, but. Yeah, well, I mean, well, we so let's just them. first talk about exercise. I have a true or false about that. So true or false exercise and stress reduction is proving to be effective for back pain. So do you, talk about that first and then we can get into the what you should do yeah so uh yeah so exercising obviously is going to help you strengthen certain muscles exercising stretch so exercise um strengthening certain muscles is going to be so like i said core and glutes typically provide stability for the back Uh, then, and in, and then obviously there's a lot of other exercises and stretches. And then um, for stress reduction, yeah, there's a lot of studies that are showing that um, you know uh, if you're if you have a lot of anxiety or even depression uh, and and a lot of stress, that also correlates with back pain. So uh, that's why you need to have a holistic system. Um, that's why we in our low back pain course that we offer on our website, we have a holistic system where we also have psychological interventions, such as how to breathe properly from your diaphragm. And, and uh, in general, uh, you, you want to either take up meditation or, or uh, be aware of your relate the relationships that you have in your life and you know, if they're causing you any anxiety and, or pain or anything like that that can also contribute to your nervous system and to ex exacerbating your pain. So definitely stress reduction should be part of the exercising. Um, I, I mean, I'm happy to talk more about uh, the different exercising and, and stress reduction, but yeah, that's like the, the mini answer there. Okay, well, that, that was a really great thing to talk about because stress is so important and we we talk about a lot of the different pillars of health and and we, a lot of times we talk about eating here on be green with amy but we've had doctors on that have talked about the stress reduction and i know that for me if i'm having a stressful day i don't i don't necessarily have back pain but i've had old injuries maybe on like a, my calf one time i injured and if i'm stressed all of a sudden that calf muscle is starting to kind of go wham, you know and i think it's it seems like when you're stressed maybe just you kind of everything just tightens up and all the all the yeah. muscles and everything just kind of tighten up and and then maybe you don't get the oxygen going or something so we're along the lines of of exercise and you're going to talk about that but let's do another true or false because it has to do with exercise True or false, yoga can be good for back pain. However, if done improperly, it can make things worse. Hmm. What do you say about that, yeah. Leon? Yeah, it's true. Um, I think that, I think, well, it's kind of, yoga is one of those things that uh, is, <laughs> I would say it's, um, it can be good and can be bad. It depends on the type of yoga. It depends on the person and it depends on the person's, um, on if they have any underlying issues. I think that um, some of the pro some of the issues with yoga is that they do a lot of forward holding, which we don't recommend. So like, you know, you just touch your toes and you round your spine. We don't recommend that at all because it's not good for your for your spine and for your discs. Uh, it might feel good in the moment, but over time, we don't recommend that stretch. Um, and that, so, so yoga does have a lot of that stuff. Now, it also have a lot of it has a lot of beneficial stuff like cat cows, child's pose, which we also advocate. Um, and uh, there is some good, like you know, all the warrior poses are good for the hips and stuff, and for strengthening, it can be good. I think I think the issues with with yoga is that yeah you got to be careful. So what, like we recommend if you're gonna do a forward fold, keep your spine straight. 
but like for example if you want to stretch your hamstrings there's much easier and safer ways to stretch your hamstrings than forward folding um like easy one is lying down and then bringing the leg up and, and folding with strap and and your spine is not affected at all and you're still going to get a good hamstring stretch so um Yoga can be good and bad, so just be. I, I would say see how you feel after you do yoga, especially how it affects your spine, um, and avoid any poses that cause you pain. Basically, just modify it to suit your own needs. Okay, well then let's just continue the conversation on about exercise because we talked about walking and how that's important and and what you should do with your abs when you're walking. So that was good. So what other things did you want to talk about as far as back pain and exercise? Yeah, so I would say, so the two main areas that one wants to look at is you have the upper back and neck area where you can have postural dysfunctions like we talked about in the beginning, forward head, rounded shoulders. That's one area you want to tackle. And then the, the, the second part, uh, the second postural dysfunction that a lot of people have is with their low back and hip area. That's where a lot of, we call it anterior pelvic tilt. That's postural uh, dysfunction where you have an excessively low back arch. You know, we've seen the people have very much like excessively low uh, back. Arch. I mean, I'll show it here. Uh, if I do, if I do uh, this, like very arch, yes. Um, so what you want to do is you want to find a neutral spine. That's the best. And um, basically, the exercise modalities and the stretching is going to depend on what you're trying to fix. So in, if we talk about the, the upper back and neck area, we talk about like the upper trapezius muscles, for example, here. For a lot of people, it's very tight. Uh, so, so you want to, so like stretching, like side stretching like that, as well as levator scapula muscle, which goes in the back here. That's just by bringing your head down. So relaxing a lot of the stuff that's going on in the back here can go a long way, as well as um, strengthening the front of the neck muscles, like we talked about earlier with the chin tuck. So just that, come, obviously there's a lot more to it, but that would be for the upper back. These are the type of things you want to do, stretching certain muscles, strengthening other muscles. And in the low back, for the excessive low back arch, you would want to work on strengthening your core and your glutes, and then stretching out things like hip flexors that get get really tight on most people. Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of like what you want to be uh, aware of. And of course, you want to make sure that you're doing those exercises and stretches properly, so that you're not causing yourself more pain. Right, or injuring yourself because sometimes people get all excited about the new year or, or, or new new something coming up, an event, and they want to get fit all of a sudden, and they just go into warrior mode, and that, that can yeah. cause an injury. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, exactly. yeah so you're, you're saying that uh, – now, what about when we're driving? Because sometimes – because you said that we should periodically stand – right? To give ourselves some breaks, but maybe you're on a long drive. So what can we do when we're driving? So, I mean, when, when you're actually driving, definitely get a lumbar support. Uh, I just use a t-shirt actually, and I just roll it up and it's behind my low back when I'm driving. That just helps my spine stay neutral. Uh, making sure your head again is not coming forward too much. So bring it back. Um, Adjusting your seat so your arms, again, you're not reaching forward too much. That can go a long way with the driving. And then, um, yeah, we would still recommend every 40 minutes, maybe every hour, even on a long drive, just pull, pull, uh, pull over somewhere, get out, stretch out a little bit, walk around, and then continue driving again. That's what I would do with long drives. I mean, that's what I do with long drives. So. I don't think it's a good idea to stay in the car for more than 40, more than an hour would be really bad for your body. Okay. Well, that's good to know because some people they just get into that drive mode and they just want to keep going. And that could be something that's uh, very important to think about. So now you were talking about the quads and the abs. 
and I heard different information. One one source that I said, or several sources I said, so, several sources that I read said talking about what? Sorry, I just I okay. Just, I just so cut off. yeah, I had different sources talking about what's the most important muscle. Oh. Many sources have said it's your abs. That's the most important muscle to be strong for your back, and other sources say no it's your glutes if you have to have strong glutes so what do you say about that what what's the most important muscles to strengthen yeah so in general it would be core and glutes yeah okay That's so they're equal, pretty general. much equally as important yeah they're both the yeah, same yeah it's yeah yeah so, so your core stabilizes your spine um that's why it's important but your glutes if they're not firing properly if they're not uh activating properly you're gonna have problems and that is also going to com contribute to low back uh and and, and it's like you know, if you're again, if your erector spine and muscles, the muscles in the back are too activated, which they are for most people, then your hip flexors in the front are, are going to be very tight. So you want to stretch your hip flexors as well, release your hip flexors as well. Um, so it's not just one thing, you know what I mean? Um, so if we're talking about low back, I would say, yeah, the core and the glutes. And uh, yeah, that, those would be the most important muscles to strengthen. Okay, well, Angela, she said that she wanted to know if you could demo a stretch for the QL. Yeah, we have a stretch, I believe, in our uh, YouTube channel the Q in the QL right here. I don't have enough space right now. It involves going into like a door frame and then uh, bending to the side and stuff like that. Um, what I would recommend also for the QL is instead of stretching it is getting a massage ball and finding it behind and then applying pressure with a massage ball is probably going to be the QL than a stretching it. Oh, that's interesting. There's just so many tips that you seem to have as far as what people can do for themselves which is sometimes that that's just a ni nice thing to have. And like I said, and we'll talk more about that later, that your website gives a lot of good inform information. And so Angela said, okay, I know what to do. <laughs> Massage bowl is a helpful tool. Thank you. So, yes. So did you want to talk um, more about exercise as far as what, what we should be thinking about? Yeah, I mean, yeah, one of the one of the easiest things you could do is, uh, in terms of releasing some tension in your upper back, maybe because it's easier here to show uh, is so you have a levator scapula muscle which runs from the neck all the way down to your shoulder blade, the top of your shoulder blade. This muscle gets really tight on both sides. It runs on both sides. So um, what you can do is if you want to try alleviating alleviating some of the uh, tension is it's an easy stretch you can do uh, just take your hand like this look at your armpit and then look down at your pockets okay and you're applying a little bit of pressure you should feel it right here okay and then the other side again look at your armpit towards your armpit and then uh, you're gonna feel it on this side and you want to hold about 30 to 60 seconds. Yeah, exactly. Uh, just like you're doing, Amy. Yeah. And you could do oh. that several times a day. And you should feel it relaxing a little bit as well there. Yeah, that's really great. And it gives you kind of a, a, an opportunity to kind of break away from maybe what you're doing that's maybe stressing you out because you're trying to do a deadline or something and gives you a chance maybe to do a little breathing too. So. That's just yeah. wonderful suggestions that you have. Oh, Angela yeah. said that you're showing a great neck stretch. <laughs> yeah. right. Thank you, Angela. Yeah, yeah Angela's a, a yoga 
instructor and she's been on the show a few times. She's going to be coming on on their next show. So she is agreeing with you as far as the, the yoga, how, you know, you have to really be th thoughtful as far as the poses that you take. And that's, that's very good. So now what we're doing everyday things, you talk about driving and you talk about being at the computer. So things that like for me, I'm, I'm doing pivoting things. So I'm loading the dishwasher, you know, so what can I do to make sure that I'm doing that properly? You, when you're saying you're saying pivoting, you mean like twisting? I'm I'm saying yeah, twi twisting, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, in general, twisting is not the best for your spine if you're constantly doing. If you, especially if you're picking something up with with weight, that can be problematic for your spine. Um, so we generally don't recommend twisting too much. So I'll see if I can show it here. Um, so if you're doing the dishes, what you want to do is you want to hip hinge. So when you're doing like so we 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 have the hips here and you wanna you wanna hip hinge so that you're not rounding like this, but instead you're squatting and then you know you could do this. So this is how you can load the dish dishwasher or if you are um uh, uh load uh, doing laundry as well, so like you're putting things so you wanna be in this position, brace your core hip hinge at your hips. So this is a really important movement that we teach is hip hinging through the hips, uh, which is basically a, like a squat. So your spine is neutral. And then I wouldn't twist so much with like a heavy object. I would I would move myself and place it there. Uh, that would be ideal. Um, yeah, so this, so we, in our YouTube channel, we have a, several videos on uh, hip hinging a technique. And that's a really important one to spare your spine uh for doing everyday activities like even yeah even when you're just bending down to pick something up you should be doing hip hinging type of uh maneuver yeah yeah so it seems like we just have to learn new habits and incorporate them in our daily life as far as all these things go because these Sorry, bad habits cutting are, off uh yeah one thing you could do, Leon, if you want to, is you could sign out and sign back in, and that might help your connection a little bit. And I can just talk to the to our audience while you do that. If you just want to log out and then oh, I'm, come back I'm in, fine now. Yeah, I'm, you're I'm fine. Good. Okay. I'm good right now. Yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. So now, I mean, is back pain inevitable as we age? It depends on the person. It depends on. <laughs> on uh, your structure of your body. It depends on the kind of things you do. Like I'm always going to have tightness because I dance a lot and I go to the gym. Um, it depends what you're doing. Um, like, uh, so yeah. It, so you and usually uh, from the research I saw uh, the people, uh, older people, they have a greater thoracic kyphosis. Like, so as you age, people have more hunched posture. So in a way, you have to do more of the reversing type of exercising so that when you age, you, your posture doesn't get worse. Um, yeah, but I would say in terms of back, like some people have no back pain, no posture issues, other people have, have them. Uh, so it really depends on the person. But you know, like they say, 80% of people have some sort of back pain. Yeah, exactly. So now we were talking about daily activities that for, for many older adults, just getting out of bed is tough, you know, maybe. Yeah. So what do you, what do you think that they should do to help relieve that back pain when they're trying to get out of bed? Yeah. So you want to find a position of getting out of bed that does not reproduce your pain symptoms. That's the key. Um, and I mean, a general one is first rolling onto your side and then pushing off, sitting up and then uh, getting off the bed. So going to your side first, pushing up, but with bracing your core the entire time, by the way. So you want to contract your muscles in the stomach as you're doing all this. It's very important. That way you're not activating your low back. Now, if, if you feel like that's activating it, then you might want to try a different method. Maybe you need to 
roll onto your stomach and then push off. Basically try to find a way to get out of bed pain-free is to be your, your mission. Um, usually, and, and, and you don't want to, usually doing a sit-up is not the way to go because that can be really uh, difficult on your body. Usually going rolling somehow on the side or the stomach and then coming off of it is better. So should, do you think that people should do, people who are struggling to get out of bed because of the back pain, do you think that they should do any stretchings in bed before they attempt the rollover or other methods of trying to get out of bed? Would that be helpful? Yeah, definitely they can, yeah. I mean, um, uh, pelvic tilts are very easy to do. Uh, this is an exercise where you're just literally uh, sucking in your stomach uh, and then you're letting it go, sucking in your stomach, and you're letting go. So as you're lying in bed, that's like the easiest, that's like the perfect exercise for the bed. Um, the other thing you could do is do some cat-cows. So you roll on, the, on your all fours, you can do some cat-cows uh, before getting out of bed as well. That can help. Um, you can do some thoracic mobility stuff where you're like moving, like just doing the hand opening like that as you're lying on the side uh, in bed as well uh, before coming out of it. Yeah, you could do that for sure. Yeah. Okay. So it's because maybe it seems like sometimes you've been laying still for pretty much for a long period of time and now you want to maybe get the blood flow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, or, yeah. Yeah. Or something like that. So what, what we, are. Yeah. Go ahead. No, we, we tell people like sometimes people can't get on the floor to do exercises. So the other we do tell people to do they can also do the exercise on their beds uh, if they can't get on the floor. So like just go into a cat cow on your bed it might be easier than getting down and up on the floor. Um, and, and other doing a, you know other exercises on the bed might be a good idea. Yeah, I think that that's a great idea because there, there are people that are, I mean, even people in their 30s, some of them would say to me, get on the floor. Are you kidding? I'll never get up. So there are so many things that, that you could suggest that somebody do on a yoga mat or on the floor where they could just get in their bed and do those types of stretches and, and, and small movement exercises. And then they'd still, then they would be able to get up. So that's, that's a really great suggestion. So we had uh, some questions that people are going to be asking. And let's see, we have our first question, which is, I'll get it here. Okay, so this is from Jake. He said, I'm 89 and my low back pain is getting worse. I can't walk or stand long before it locks up. I'm overweight. What can I do? And I'm sure, I'm sure his, his doctors have told him to lose weight, So, but he's 89. So what, what a other things we would tell him yeah so i think <laughs> there's not enough information here for me to 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 give anything specific i think yeah you you want to find the first thing i would do is get diagnosed to understand exactly what is going on in your case because you say here before it locks up uh the question is what is locks up what locks up so if you find a good chiropractor or physical therapist that you can see in person to, uh, that can tell you what's going on, if it's your back muscles, like your rectus spinae muscles, uh, that spasm, maybe that's what you mean. I don't know exactly. Um, or maybe it's your hip flexors, but you, then you, you want to work on uh, relieving the tension there. And uh, I mean, again, I don't know if it's an acute pain or this is a chronic pain, which would be treated slightly different. Um, but uh, yeah, definitely what you don't want to do is you don't want to push into pain. So you say here, I can't walk or stand long. Um, you want to find positions that don't cause you pain. Uh, that's very important. So even though th this person is experiencing this locking up, if they, they walk too much or do you still encourage, would you still encourage them to, to do walking? It depends. 
on, on it depends on the situation. Uh, yeah, it, so I would find how much they can walk, what can they co tolerate? So if they can tolerate a minute of walking, that's what I would do. If it's um, just walking around their apartment, that's good enough. Um, but if they walk for a minute and then everything locks up again, then I would tell them to stop walking or to take a break and then walk again later. So that's what I would, I would try to find what works for that person. Um, you go as far as you can or standing for a long time, stand, stand for as much as you can. And then, I mean, not more than, you know, basically as soon as your symptoms hit, you don't want to do that activity. You want to switch positions. Right. But, the, but so in general, and you can't give medical advice to somebody that you haven't met and you don't know their history, but in general, I guess, are you saying that maybe just do short spurts of walking and standing and then, and not be just not, not give into it where you just say, okay, I can't walk at all. So I'm just not going to. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, yeah. You, you definitely, you, you want to keep moving. It's very important to, to keep moving. Think. Just figure out how much you can move before you need a break. Um, but yes, I would definitely move, walk. Uh, and like I talked earlier, I mean, it could be that the way you're walking uh, is uh, exacerbating your pain. So you have to find out maybe it's a postural thing. Maybe it's certain muscles. Not, maybe it's your glutes not activating properly. Um, so you, you then you have to do certain exercises to to, uh, to make sure that your nervous system is firing the right muscles so you can walk pain free. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe that may be. In general, you want to move. Yeah. But what you were talking about earlier, as far as what to do with your abs when you're walking, yeah. maybe that might be, be helpful to Jake if he can. Exactly. Yeah. It. So we'll try to brace out. your core. Yeah. Try to brace your core as you walk and see if you can walk longer that way. Sure. Right. So when you're bracing your core, what you're saying is, is that you're, you're using that muscle instead of relying on your back as much when you're walking. Exactly. Yeah. So when you're bracing your core properly, you are essentially deactivating some of those erector spinae muscles, those that run on the side of your spine. Now they might activate some still because they're still stabilizing your spine, but um, you're going to be putting a lot more emphasis on your core. Um, that's what you want to do. Okay. Well, that sounds like something that could be helpful there. Uh, so Jim wants to know, do inversion tables work? <laughs> I can't answer this. I've never tried one. Uh, oh, yeah? I've never tried it, so I, I, can't, I, I can't give advice on that. Um, I, ha I haven't studied this uh, inversion tables, so yeah. Can't speak to that. I mean, if it provides decompression, then that's good. Um, but I'm, I don't want to. I don't want to speak about something I don't have experience. With. Okay, that's fair enough. I I had an opportunity to try one once, and I just didn't want, didn't want to. <laughs> didn't seem natural. <laughs> okay, Angie Hanging wants to know. Down, it's not yeah, and just having your somebody something holding your ankles while you're upside down it just didn't didn't seem right yeah. so, uh and you want to know do you recommend acupuncture um so i've tried acupuncture and i've tried uh dry needling um acupuncture is using more of the east uh eastern philosophy which is opening up energy centers in the body which is more of a spiritual kind of um, take on it. And I know there's people, and I've heard people that say it works for them, and I've heard people that it didn't work for them. Um, I would say that depends for what. Um, if you have muscle pain, I would, instead of acupuncture, I would try dry needling. Um, because dry needling is essentially acupuncture, but it's, uh, it's using Western 
uh, method. So they're, they're putting the needles inside muscle tissues to release trigger points. Whereas acupuncture, they're putting needles in certain spots that are supposed to free up your chi energy. So it depends what you subscribe to, okay? Um, you can try it, see if it helps or not. But uh, from my experience, the dry needling uh, definitely works. And there's a lot of research backing dry needling. Uh, there's, there's a lot of studies that show it works. Well, I had never heard of dry needling, so I'm glad that you talked about that. And hopefully that will help some other people. Maybe Angie can consider that too. So is that something that you would find somebody, just like you find somebody that does acupuncture, is that something that you would go to a physician for, or it would be somebody like an acupuncturist? So a lot of physical therapists do dry needling. But yeah, just, just search dry needling in your area okay. and um, yeah, that's, and then you'll find that, yeah. It's, it's essentially like acupuncture, but using the Western uh, more about treating real trigger points. Okay. So Anthony, want to know what products do you recommend to maintain good posture while seated? So, yeah, so like I said before, uh, a laptop stand, you can buy it on Amazon. Uh, for your laptop just to raise your computer app is good, as well as uh, getting lumbar cushion support. Uh, well, I have one, I can show, I have this one here. This is a simple one, just goes behind the back uh, in your chair. Um, and um, uh, we don't recommend braces, so we don't, we don't really, we don't recommend posture braces. Um, those two things you can do. Okay. Uh, Carolyn wants to know, she said, I have multiple bulging discs and I'm wiped out by early evening. Had fusion surgery a year ago on L3, L4, discouraged with pain level on Tylenol. Uh. Yeah. Well, all right. So I don't want to give medical advice, right. um, <laughs> but... Um, yeah, the first thing is you need to know if the, the pain that is being caused is caused by your bulging discs or not. Um, because sometimes people have bulged, all of us have bulging discs. There's a lot of research showing even that uh, some people have bulging discs and herniated discs, and it does not lead to pain. Um, you want to figure out what kind of pain you're having, um, Carolyn. So, is this, uh, are you having sciatica symptoms? So pain going down your legs or is it muscle spasm in your low back? Uh, in general, like we have articles and videos and programs. We have articles specifically on bulging disc exercise. We have an article and, and videos on herniated disc exercises and sciatica. Uh, they're essentially using the same terminology. Uh, one of the, one of the exercises that is recommended usually for bulging discs or herniated discs is a cobra pose. So Carolyn, I don't know, you, you maybe you've heard about it, like doing cobra pose. If you do that pose, if it makes you feel better after, then you know that that pose is good at relieving some of your pain symptoms. However, if you do that pose and it's not alleviating your pain or making it worse, then you know it's not a good exercise for you. So. But again, um, you want to figure out what what poses and what positions uh, bring on the pain and which ones take away the pain. With bulging discs, you also don't want to do forward head, uh, forward um, bending. So forward folding type of exercises are not good for bulging discs. Uh, and um, also you want to work on your posture, your upper body posture, so that, uh, again, bulge discs are usually caused by uh, people who are, are uh, spending too much time forward uh, with the bad posture. That's great. And you were talking about cobra pose. And, and so I'm imagining that that would be something that you would be laying maybe on your belly and then you would kind of push up on your hands like you were a, a cobra snake and try to maybe just lift the upper part of your body. Yeah, yeah. You could do half uh 
half cobra is fine too or if you're more flexible you can try to do a full cobra but yes that that um pose it kind of reverses the this direction so a lot of people feel relief from doing that pose but but not everybody that's why you have to see if uh it works or not for you well carolyn said i'll check out your articles i'm familiar with cobra and it helps so that was yeah. that was right on that's great yeah i think you're gonna a lot of people are gonna find a lot of helpful things on, on your website and so forth was it was there another exercise that you wanted to share with us that we could do to help alleviate the back pain can you say that again it just cut off a little. sure was there another exercise that you wanted to show us that might help alleviate back pain uh let's see here. so we did so chin tax is very important we did the levator scapula one uh i think another thing that's easy you can do is just um head circles like neck circles so just just doing neck circles throughout the day uh it is is good and then reversing the direction and if you can try to hit all the different segments as well as you do when you do it you do it really slow so going side down down then the other diagonal then side the diagonal so you can hit all the different segments when you do it uh that can be um also helpful just to kind of release some of the tension in the neck yeah wow that's so great and the, and I love how most of the exercises that you're talking about are approachable for people with all kinds of levels of fitness that they can do. And that's, and even if somebody doesn't have back pain, it sounds like these are really great things to, to incorporate in our daily lives to try to keep our, us healthy and from trying to, uh, from having those issues. Yeah, you want to keep your mo your joints mobile. So yeah, just doing these kind of things will be good throughout the day. Yeah. Okay. Well, I wanted you to give you an opportunity to talk about your website and and what you do and how people can get a hold of you. I know that you haven't you have yeah, sure. so an Instagram account. Yeah, you can check it out. Yeah, we're just kind of starting to be more on Instagram. Uh, the main platforms is definitely our website. We have a lot of uh, articles that are in depth, as well as our YouTube channel that is very big. And we have um, a lot of posture advice as well as back pain advice. Um, yeah, so uh, either our articles or our videos, uh, check them out. And then we also have two premium courses that we open enrollment to twice a year. Uh, the, which is one of them is focused on posture. So it's the complete posture fix. And the other one is focused on low back, which is called the complete low back fix. So th those are two courses that if you're looking for more um, and a program that you can follow, those are good as well. Are these actual live courses that people are would enroll in? So we run them live in the sense that uh, we open enrollment to them in um, uh in specific periods of time for only a specific amount of time and then we have a a facebook a private facebook group there where people can ask questions we also do uh q and a's during those times so in in the sense it's live in that way the, the videos are pre-recorded already but uh the questions the q and a that happens during the sessions that we take people in so in a way it is a live uh class experience Wow, that is, I'm sure a lot of people are going to find that helpful. And it kind of helps keep you on track too, I think, right? Because sometimes we, I, I find that if I have somebody as an accountability or, or, yeah. or a program that's an accountability, then I'm more likely to do things like that. Yeah, exactly. It's like, as, as the, so, we, so we, we, we bring out module one, which is, let's say, ergonomics and daily habits, then during that time people can ask questions on the facebook group and then module two comes out which is you know stretching module and then people can ask questions strengthening exercise. so it's like 
as we're as they're learning, they can also ask questions, make sure they understand everything, as well as just I think they just get inspired seeing other students doing the same thing. Yeah, I think that sounds wonderful. I'm sure a lot of people are going to want to take advantage of that. Well, I really want to thank you, Leon, for all of your wonderful, helpful tips about alleviating back pain. And I want to encourage people to check out your website and your YouTube. And we have links to that in the show notes for everyone. And Green Warriors, tell us what you're going to remember about today's presentation and what's your takeaway. And please stay tuned for a special announcement. I do want to thank Just Tat's voice because she did the countdown and she did the promos. And Just Tat's voice, tell us who's coming up next. Less muscle means greater weakness and less mobility, both of which may increase your risk of fall and fractures. Fitness instructor Angela Faschetti will lead an upper body workout class to help us build muscle and mobility. Beginners to advanced are welcome on Wednesday, July 27th, 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific, on Be Green with Amy Live. Well, most of all, I want to thank all of you that joined us today and that are watching and listening on the podcast because we love to have you Green Warriors come on and participate and ask questions and we really are here to help you and that's why Leon's here because we all have a passion for helping other people and he he does as well and we really appreciate that and I wanted all of you to take your right hand and grab your left shoulder and take your left hand and grab your right shoulder and squeeze because that's a hug from me to you and if you want to join me with Leon because he's going to help me at do my tagline, which is be strong, be well, and be green. Are you ready, Leon? Okay. All right. So until I see you guys again, remember, be strong, be well. Ready, Leon? And be green. Be strong, be well. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Be strong, be well, be green. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye. Thanks, Leon. Now you can listen to Be Green with Amy expert interviews wherever you go. Listen while walking, meal prepping, or traveling. Find Be Green with Amy on Apple, Google, Alexa, Amazon, or virtually anywhere you find podcasts. Be strong, be well, and be green with Be Green with Amy.